If you've been playing retro games for any amount of time, you've inevitably seen the praise for CRT TVs. Retro gamers love CRT TVs. In fact, I'd say the number one users of CRTs these days has gotta be retro gamers. Right behind people who haven't found the need to buy a new TV in the last 20 plus years. But when those people do decide to get rid of their TVs and stick them on their curb with a free sign, you can bet that a retro gamer will come sniffing around for it from miles away like a mouse and a piece of cheese. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, much like retro games themselves, some people have figured out that this stuff is highly coveted. This can result in people not being willing to give their TV away for free, instead charging money for it on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, or something like that. And even worse, sometimes they'll try to charge a lot of money for it. And by a lot, I mean over $100. Well, joke's on them because we'll never pay it. You see, CRT TVs have a few things going for them in their favor that make it so you can almost always find one for cheap or even free with a little bit of patience. Reason number one, there are a ton of these TVs out there because everybody used to have them. Remember, a CRT is just what a TV was for a long time. Reason number two, people are always going to be trying to get rid of these suckers due to how large and bulky they are. If somebody isn't using something this enormous, most people will be rational enough to want to try to get rid of it. It's not like a pen or something you can just stick in a drawer and forget about it. Something like a CRT is a burden to keep around if you're no longer using it. And like with most things, the more somebody wants to get rid of it, the less they'll want in return to part with it. Now, you may be thinking, what about CRTs being recycled, donated, destroyed, or otherwise removed from existence? Well, the thing is that CRTs can actually be pretty expensive to recycle, and as a result, a lot of places like Goodwill and Salvation Army don't really accept them as donations anymore. Certainly not like they used to. So what is somebody to do with a CRT TV that they want to be rid of other than try to give it away to somebody? I mean, it's difficult to donate, and nobody is going to want to pay a bunch of money to have it recycled, so that's kind of the best option. Plus, I'm not sure about where you live, but people seem to love the old tried and true leave it out on the curb trick, the easiest way to get rid of stuff. I really do believe that this is the best way to try to obtain a CRT TV, especially if you live somewhere that people do that and you're willing to be a little patient. You'll also need to be a little more patient while hunting for a CRT if you want to find one with certain inputs on it. This is pretty easy to check for. Just take a look at the back of the TV or ask for the seller to send you a picture. I'll run through them in order of worst to best quality. Okay, so basically any CRT supports RF, that's just a given. Most CRTs will also have composite as well, unless it happens to be a much older TV. Slightly harder to find are TVs that support S-Video, and even more difficult would be CRTs with component inputs on them. Typically, if TVs have component video, then they will also have inputs for everything below them. However, I have seen some weird stuff, such as TVs that had a component input, but not a S video input. And if you're wondering about HD CRTs, two words that seem like they'd never go together, these aren't always recommended because they often come with 16x9 displays that just don't look right with games intended for a 4x3 aspect ratio, among some other issues, and even if you change the display mode. You'll also want to be mindful of how many inputs the TV has on it if you're planning on plugging in multiple consoles, which, let's face it, most retro gamers are going to do. Otherwise, you'll need to look into some sort of switching device or resort to yanking cords in and out of your TV every time you want to play a different console. Definitely not ideal considering the inputs are usually on the back of the TV and can be a pain to reach depending on how you have your TV situated. That being said, there are quite a few TVs that have an additional input on the front as well, though this is usually limited to composite video and it might look kind of ugly to have cords running out of the front of your TV. I find it most useful for briefly plugging something into your TV that you just want to test out real quick. Now, as far as the quality of the TV itself goes, you can read a lot of opinions online about how people think different brands are better than others. If you have your heart set on a certain brand or model, you're welcome to do that, but just keep in mind it may take longer to find. My personal advice is to just look for a TV that has the inputs you want, and if you find one that's from a brand you've at least heard of, then you'll probably be happy with it. I also need to of course mention PVMs and B 
CVMs, which are essentially like high-end CRTs that weren't really sold to the public and were typically used in places like video production studios or integrated into medical equipment. Most of these are in the hands of collectors at this point and often fetch pretty high prices. That being said, if you can somehow locate a business that used to have them, you could possibly contact them and arrange a way to pick up any old units they may have in storage. Keep in mind these do have some different connections on the back that may not accept the typical RCA type connectors, though you can always purchase some of these little RCA to BNC adapters in order to plug your composite and component cables into them. Some other factors to consider are things such as a curved screen versus a flat screen. Now, most CRT TVs will have a curved screen with really only some of the later CRTs having a flat screen. The biggest difference between the two would probably be the geometry alignment, which is essentially how close the image comes to being perfectly aligned. TVs with a curved screen are often known for generally having better alignment, though it's practically impossible for the alignment to ever be perfect just due to the way the technology of a CRT works. Still, in most cases it's good enough that you wouldn't really notice it while playing games unless you were intentionally trying to spot it. You'll also want to look out for strange color spots on your TV when it's turned on. This is most likely caused by the TV being magnetized, which can result from a number of different things happening like rotating the TV or even a nearby lightning strike. And the solution is to, you guessed it, demagnetize the TV or what is often called degaussing. Now, how do you do this? Well, the simplest way is to just turn on your TV. You know that noise that sounds like a robot fart when you turn on a CRT TV? Yup, that's the TV's automatic degauss feature. If turning on the TV once doesn't get rid of color issues you may have, you can always power the TV off and back on again, giving a little time between each cycle. If this still doesn't fix the issue, then you're going to have to get a little more technical and you may may find yourself doing wacky scientific stuff like walking backwards away from your TV while holding a device that consists of magnet wire. And no, I am not making that up. If you don't want to deal with that, you're probably best off finding a TV that doesn't require that kind of a fix. Okay, so at this point you may be thinking, how the hell am I supposed to check for all this stuff while the TV is sitting on somebody's curb? Well, that's the challenge. If you're buying the TV from somebody, then they'll likely at least let you come inside to plug the TV in and see it in action, but if that's not an option, you may just be stuck rolling the dice. Speaking of which, quick little story for you. I scooped a 32-inch CRT off a lawn once and brought it home only to realize one of the inputs had issues. So what did I do? I brought it back and can only imagine the relief they felt when I first took that beast of a TV away and then the sinking disappointment when they looked out the window a couple days later and saw that it was back baby oh yeah as far as transporting these CRT TVs goes, you're going to want to either be strong, have somebody help, or possibly even both. And for the love of goodness, lift with your legs and save your back. Don't try to be a hero with a CRT or you will lose almost every time. These TVs are awkward to carry, not just because of the size and weight of them, but also because of the funky shape and weight distribution they have. Most of the weight is in the front of these TVs, so be aware of that when you lift it. And that about does it for my advice. As far as the future of CRT TVs goes, we're probably not going to see them go into production again in any sort of mass market way. The thing is, these TVs are just way too expensive to manufacture these days without the kind of mass assembly that kept their prices reasonable back in the day. There aren't enough retro gamers or people who want them for other purposes to justify producing them on the kind of scale they used to. But who knows, maybe some newer, cheaper alternative that attempts to replicate the look of them could emerge. You never know. All that being said, there are still tons of CRT TVs out in the wild that can be found, and I imagine that they'll be in circulation for a while just due to the sheer numbers of them that were made back in the day. Okay, and for this video's question, I'd like you to share any fun stories you may have about CRTs, whether it's a story about you actually obtaining one or not. Also, if you're interested in watching my video about the benefits of using a CRT TV for retro gaming, you'll find a link down below in a pinned comment. All right, so be sure to leave your comments down below and I will see you in the next video. He's the red bird, yeah. And he's talking, talking about me.